Hello, this is setting up iTunes and I'm going to start with downloading. So go to apple.com and right up on the top there is a downloads link. If you go to that it brings you to Apple's download page and right on the front here is iTunes and we can hit the download button and it'll bring us to the download iTunes page. And here it shows the current version and uh, this is the Windows version. If you need the Macintosh version, the link is right down here. You can also enter your email address and keep these boxes checked if you want to stay updated on Apple and iTunes information. Otherwise, you can just hit the download iTunes free button and it'll start the download in your browser. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the cancel button, but otherwise you'd hit save. And this is what the iTunes setup icon looks like. So you'll double click that and it'll start the installation process. It'll have a couple different screens in there. Uh, the main one being this one, which asks if you'd like to add iTunes and QuickTime shortcuts to your desktop, which I did. And here's an iTunes shortcut. The other checkbox is use iTunes as the default player for audio files. That means any audio file that's on your computer, if you were to double click it, it would automatically open up in iTunes. And this option can also be changed within iTunes, which I'll show you in a little bit later. And the last option here is your destination folder, where you'd like iTunes to install. And if you're happy with all those settings, just go ahead and press the install button and it'll start the process. Now here I've got iTunes open. Yours will look similar to this after you're done downloading it and the main preferences you can change are up here under edit and then down to preferences and under the general tab here the first one on the top this area where it says show are the different things you can check and it'll show up here on the left hand side as you can see I don't have ringtones audiobooks or iPod games checked so they're not showing over here the next important thing under preferences would be under playback. These are just some playback options. You can change uh, crossfade playback. What that means is when one song ends and another one begins. If you have this checked and the second slider is between 12 and 1 seconds, that's how much the songs will overlap when they're switching between songs. Otherwise, if you don't have it checked, it'll just completely end one song and start up the next one. These two checkboxes and drop down menus are for how you want the music and movies in iTunes to be displayed. Um, they can be displayed in a separate window, full screen, in the iTunes window, etc. It's just a couple different options you can set. And down on the bottom is some shuffle information. You can move this slider from more likely, less likely, and random, and what that is is the smart shuffle um, and hearing sequential songs by the same artist or same album while shuffle is on. So if you move that to more likely, you'd be more likely to hear that, less likely, less likely. Or in the middle, it's completely random. And on the bottom, you can change the shuffle settings to shuffle songs, shuffle albums, or shuffle groupings. The third area is under advanced, and under the first of three tabs here, the general tab, this is something you should probably set up right away with iTunes. And this is the music folder location. Right now mine is set to the default, which is in My Documents, My Music. Otherwise, if you have a place on your computer where you'd like to keep the music, you can hit Change and select that here. This checkbox is to keep iTunes music folder organized. And what that'll do is any music you have in this iTunes folder location will be organized by artist name in a folder and then within that we'll have the album names in a folder and then within each one of those we'll have the track names um, and the files will be named with the track number and the track name. This checkbox is copy files to iTunes music folder when adding to library. <clears throat> that would be if you got some music on your desktop or in a different location, you can drag and drop it into iTunes or import it 
and it'll make a copy of it and put it up in this music folder location. I like to have that on because it's a good way to know that your folders are staying in that same location. And then once I'm done copying it, I delete it from my desktop or a different location that it's in. And here's that checkbox again to use iTunes as default player for audio files. Just like an install, it's this is the location where it can be checked or unchecked in the future. And under under the importing tab, this first drop down menu is for what you want iTunes to do when you insert a CD. If you want to just show the CD, begin playing, ask to import the CD, or automatically import the CD, you can choose that. And import using which type of encoder, what file format you want iTunes to save the music files as. Personally, I prefer MP3 because it's a versatile file, and if I were to switch to, say, Microsoft Media Player, I know that the MP3 file format will be accepted in the future. So that's the one I use, and you can change the quality settings here as well. So those are the preferences that I think are important for iTunes when you first set it up, and the next tutorial I'll show you just some simple navigation around iTunes. Thanks!